Today I want to talk about gift card scams, but before we get into all that, take a look at this right here. And Apple told me that the card had suspected fraud and that I should go back to Safeway and tell them that I should get another card. Seven went back to the Safeway and they said it was Apple's problem. She then went to this Rite Aid down the street to get another Apple gift card for her daughter. Turns out that one was invalid as well. Now if they got me twice, I will be sick. It's sick to my stomach. Gift cards were first introduced into the retail market back in 1994 by Neiman Marcus, a high-end clothing store. They introduced the first gift card using a payment infrastructure, although Blockbuster Entertainment was the first company to do so on a wide scale. And ever since then, scammers have been able to find multiple loopholes regarding methods to steal your money. Everything from large organized crime groups, and these are very professional personnel, right? And they are working with these companies whose sole objective is to rip you off and find new methods to rip you off. One method they'll do is simply gathering the details from a supply of gift cards before packaging them for distribution to stores around the world. Now that is more of an inside job, but what your everyday scammer is doing is they will go into a store that sells gift cards and place their own barcodes on the back of multiple gift cards. So take a look at this. One of the big tricks, a fake barcode. Yes, fake barcode wow. that peels off on the back of the card. I would never guess that. I never, never would have guessed that either. That. Now, the barcode on a gift card is supposed to be linked to that specific card, right? That way, when it's loaded with money, the funds go directly to that card. However, if you place a barcode that is linked to your gift card over the top of another gift card, when someone goes to purchase that gift card and they load it with money, those funds will not be going to that person's card. Instead, the funds will be going to your card. Now, another method scammers are using to take your money from your gift cards is just by simply taking a quick photo of the barcode. Check this out. You can go up to the self-checkout and simply scan the barcode off nothing more than a picture of the back of the card. At checkout, we scanned our purchase and the picture of the gift card barcode. Et voila, transaction complete. What's more is the printed receipt gives you the remaining balance on the gift card. So with all of that being said, ladies and gentlemen, there are so many ways that you can be conned out of your money when dealing with gift cards. Not to mention, if you really want to get into the history of gift cards, you will quickly learn that they were literally invented to con people in the first place, right? It's a legal scam that everyone just keeps falling for. Now, let me explain. As of the end of 2021, there are over $800 billion in gift cards. And according to Bankrate, Americans are responsible for about $15 billion in unused gift cards. So half of the people that get a gift card forget to even use it. Or if they do, they almost will never use the full amount. And companies love this. That is the whole reason why Neva Marcus introduced the gift cards to consumers all the way back in 1994 to begin with. They knew if they could sell a card that could only be used at their store, most people who bought them wouldn't use the entire amount. It's almost impossible to do so anyways. If you really think about it, every time you receive a gift card, you probably left a few dollars remaining, right? Especially with a gift card like to Neiman Marcus, right? They sell some pretty expensive clothing items. So if you get a $500 gift card, you're probably only going to use like, what, $490 something dollars on it. And since everything is so expensive at that store, there's literally nothing you can buy under $4, meaning the company just automatically profits that. They even estimate how much of a profit each gift card will make them with a number called breakage, right? Now, this is an accounting term for services that are paid for but not used. So essentially, with every gift card sale, they know exactly how much pure profit they're going to make with unused gift cards. So you have to understand this from a business perspective. It's a win-win for the company because if you use the card, great, they get more sales. If you don't use the card, they don't care. You already paid for it. So when you really break everything down and you look at what a gift card is from a Concord level, 60,000 feet, you start to realize just how stupid it is to even buy a gift card in the first place, especially as gifts. If you really cared about that person that you were getting a gift card for, you would just give them cold, hard cash instead. Right. And I'm pretty sure they would appreciate actually being able to spend the full amount while simultaneously not being tied down to only being able to spend that money at one place. I actually hate when people give me a gift card, right? It's like, you really went to this store and paid for this card when you could have just given me the money. So I understand gift cards from on a deeper level, right? I understand why companies love selling them, but I will never understand why you mindless bots continue to purchase them just so you could be scammed in the end.